Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're married with board games. The year is 2050, and the world has seen many acts of terror over the past two decades. Not only that, but a third world war has been fought. And thanks to a discovery made by the United Nations, we know the group responsible for these atrocities is an evil terrorist organization known as Venom. Now, all hope is not lost, though. The UN has enacted something called Project Freedom, in which an elite task force will be recruited to stop Venom once and for all. Well, at least until the next time you play Venom Assault. Sounds pretty epic, right? Well, we're here to take a look at Venom Assault to see if it matches the level of awesomeness of the story that's been set up. Venom Assault from Spyglass Games is a cooperative deck building game with dice based combat for one to five players. Players will build their individual decks of Freedom Squadron soldiers and vehicles and together they will challenge Venom leaders on the board. At its core, it works like a traditional deck builder. You use your basic cards to buy better cards that have stronger abilities and help level the playing field when going up against the Venom leaders. But where this deck builder strays from more traditional deck builders is in the combat system. Your card's combat points will give you a number of dice to roll and you'll have to roll a certain number of successes in order to defeat an agent of Venom. You also have a scenario specific goal you're trying to reach, so your objective changes from game to game. Let's take a closer look at how all those components work together in the context of the game. This is Venom Assault. Uh, this is mainly card based, but there are other components as well, as you can see. Um, first of all, you'll notice there's a board. The great thing about this board is that there's a place for everything except for your individual playing areas. So you'll notice um, there's um, a specific place for event cards, venom leader cards, reward cards, even a place for discard piles. And then right here you have your training ground. These are the cards you're going to be able to buy and recruit uh, to make your deck better. There's a place for the deck itself, retirement pile. All of these are locations around the world that that house various Venom leaders. Each Venom leader also has a reward, so whenever you defeat the leader, you get the reward. Up there's the Venom support and the Venom support deck. Those are the different uh, people that are going to be coming along to help the Venom leaders in their battles. Venom support discard, the active event card goes there, and then over here you have a place for your mission card or your scenario card, which in this game there are 10 of those, so uh, lots of of variability uh, in your missions. There's also a place here, it's an event track that keeps track of the the uh, progress of the events. And then here, each time you, you battle a Venom leader, this is their track for their health and defense. Now the defense, that's what you're gonna have to roll to get a success when you're fighting a leader. And the health is how many successes you have to get. So for example, if your defense was on four and the health was on three, that means you'd have to roll at least three fours in order to defeat the Venom leader. So how does the game work? Well, you start off with a very basic set of cards. Everybody's got a deck of 10 cards and they're made up of commandos and recruits. And all of these cards, all of the Freedom Squadron cards, have a couple different values on them. This is their, your, their combat value, so if they're the mission leader, this is how many dice they'll bring to the battle. Uh, this is their recruit power, so that's how many, it's basically like the currency of the game. That's how many they uh, can spend to recruit new, new uh, Freedom Squadron members from the training ground. And this is the cost, so if you had, you know, two commandos, they would have a total of two uh, recruit points to spend down there, and then you're gonna look for one that um, you can buy with the power of two. There are also special abilities uh, that, that trigger in certain phases. So in this tactical phase, if they are not the mission leader, uh, they will bring in an additional die to the combat. Uh, there are some rules about you know, if the mission leaders, what the mission leaders do versus what the support does. I won't get into that. But essentially, you have one mission leader for each combat, and the other cards you can contribute as support roles. Gameplay works like a basic deck builder. You're going to be using your cards to acquire new ones. And then uh, down here, these are the, the better powered cards. So, for example, you have uh, Hardcore here. 
He brings five dice to a combat if you make him the mission leader. He's, he also costs six. Um, but then you can see he's got uh, special abilities if you don't use him as the, co as the combat leader. Uh, so those are different decisions you have to make if you want to use him as the combat leader or just as a support role. During your turn, you can select a mission leader to fight. So let's say you picked Mayhem. You're going to look and see they have different values as well. This is their support value. So what that means is they bring two additional support members to the battle. And what you would do is you would draw two of the Venom support cards and they would go into the Venom support field. And they're going to make it even more difficult for you to defeat the Venom leader. This is their defense I was talking about. So this means you have to roll at least a four to be successful. And then the health means you have to roll at least three of those successes in order to be able to defeat Mayhem. He has special abilities as well based on what phase you're in. So keep look out for that. Now I'll go ahead and show you some of those support cards. If you had Ice Buster, for example, they would add an additional health to the Venom leader. And then if you happen to be in an Arctic area when you're battling, because all these locations are in different places around the world, they would cause you to discard a random freedom support person, not a vehicle or a location, but a per per person. And then you get the idea, this one would, would make your Venom leader add a a health as well. The events will come out once per round and those are revealed by the commander for the game. Uh, this does not pass around throughout the game. Only one person remains the commander for the entirety of the game. Uh, but they will be the ones resolving, drawing and resolving the event cards. And those would do certain things like um, global effect on this one, end of turn phase, the training ground does not refill this round on the end of turn phase. So, you know, once you buy new cards, instead of it being refilled, you don't get to refill that. And that's an ongoing effect until the next one uh, is drawn. Um, so different events like that would happen when you draw those cards. Also, I mentioned if you defeat a Venom Leader, you get the reward. Uh, as an example, this is a control cube, yellow control cube. And this has a global effect, which is a really good one. Uh, you can reduce the Venom Leader's health, defense, or support by one. And that will continue throughout the game. And that's really helpful if you get a reward like that. Here are your dice that you're going to be using in the combat. And rule book. I like this rule book. I like the size of it because it makes me think of a comic book, which is what the artwork makes me think of. Um, it's a very, very well put together rule book. And on the back, it's got a nice quick reference page for when you're making your way through the game. Let's get to our thoughts on the game. Uh, let's talk about the presentation, uh, the initial impressions on what it looks like. Uh, what are your thoughts on the artwork? Well, um, I think it looks so epically 90s G.I. Joe, comic book. Yeah. All of those things rolled into one. Yeah. Well, it's perfect for the theme, too. Like what it feels like you're doing. It, it really matches what you're doing in the game. And I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I think it's perfect for the game and, and very well executed. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so one of my favorite things about the game is the board. Mm -hmm. um, on the board, there's a place for everything. The cards, and you don't have to find a place on the table to put it. It's all on the board, except for your own playing area. Um, but I really appreciate that there's a place for everything on the Including, board. Including like discard piles and everything. Right. So you're not having to guess. Right. Now, one thing I do want to mention is the cards. They're, they're pretty thin. Right. Like you have to shuffle up your hand like you do in most deck builder right. games. And I've noticed they're already kind of starting to fray a little bit. Yeah. So they're not like really high quality cards. They're just real basic. So just be aware of that. Something else that, I mean, obviously is so important about it is the gameplay. Yes. And, um, being a couple, married to board games, we really like our co-op games. Mm -hmm. And what what did you think about Venom Assault in that aspect? It's it's a really good co-op. It's you, it's you do have to rely on each other um, to take out the bad guys. Uh, you can't do it by yourself. I guess you could, but it's not as fun. Well, I mean, when I'm playing, you I'm can. the only one taking them out. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> the, um, there's not really a whole lot of r really relying on each other, like say in Harry Potter where you can like heal each other. At least we haven't come across right. that Right, you yet. have to lean on each other in that. And in yeah. this, it's more of just you up, hold up your end and I'll hold up my end. Right. But working through the, the stuff together is what really I really enjoyed uh, mm -hmm. with you. Of course, there are some scenarios that 
it's still cooperative, but we were kind of competing on who could take out the, the most leaders first. And right. of course, Laura won. Uh, but that was still fun. I still it's still very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I didn't want to mention is the turn sequence in this game. Right. There are lots of steps in in each. It's, in each. The list is extensive. Yeah, and you have to do them in order. It's very important that you t you do each step in order, and if you don't, you know, you can throw throw some things off. So it does take some getting used to. Right. But thankfully, there is a very handy page in the rule book that we were able to turn to and leave it there and leave it laying out on the table between us while we played and we could follow down the list each right. time. And I'm sure in time we'll get used to that and, and really memorize. I did, fi I did find myself starting to get it memorized Good. and know what step comes next. Um, but yeah, it is, it is pretty extensive, so just make sure that you're aware that you follow those step by step. Um, we did mention that there are lots, well, there, we, we played two different scenarios. The game comes with 10 different scenarios. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of opportunities for it to be uh, very replayable, yeah. if that's a word, um, with different objectives, different flavors of, of styles of missions that mm -hmm. you're doing. Of course, there are lots of cards in the game, lots of different mission leaders, or uh, lots of different Venom leaders. Oh, yeah, and all ranging in different... Uh, difficulties and, and abilities mm -hmm. that uh, really vary it up and that that helps they're not all so similar I right mean, you are going up against some very different people and so that's mm -hmm. that's very good and it's definitely a challenging game mm -hmm. it's not easy um, especially because you've got the dice rolling oh yeah and then the randomness of of deck deck placement or, or dealing out the cards um, you know if you're looking for specific items like in one specific scenario it could be way later on down the game before you come across those. Right. So it's challenging in that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but at the same time, um, it's not so serious and it's a, it is a bit of a battle game. It's mm -hmm. not bloody or gory or anything. This would work very well with um, the younger age group. Mm -hmm. I think it's 14 and up. Totally fine. Yeah, I think definitely. You could even possibly go to 12 personally. Definitely. Um, and so those are those are the main aspects of, of the gameplay. I wanted to talk about one other thing is is the time time frame on this game. Box says sixty minutes. Again, when you're getting used to that turn sequence. Yes. But also because of the varied dealing of the cards or, or how you build the deck. In all the different scenarios. Right. It's that's very variable. So um, I'd say more of an approximate. Right. Sixty minutes. Um, but bottom line, uh, this game is a challenging cooperative game that works well and offers a refreshing take on deck building. Venom Assault definitely has a G.I. Joe comic book style look to it, and the gameplay actually reflects this feeling as well. If you're into that sort of thing, or you were a fan of the G.I. Joe cartoon from back in the day, you'll certainly want to check this one out. Or even if you're just looking for a different take on deck building in a cooperative situation, well, we can offer our recommendation to you as well. Just remember that the time to play varies greatly from game to game, and it will take you several plays to get into the groove of things. All in all, though, we really enjoy Venom Assault enough to give it the Dice Tower seal of approval. Well, we're going to box this one up for now. Be sure to check out our website, MarriedWithBG.com, where you can find our blog and many episodes of our wonderful podcast. Thanks so much for watching. And Venom, we're coming for you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.